Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Now, cybersecurity certifications. Everybody wants them. If you're in cybersecurity, right? Everybody wants to get them. You want to show them off, put them on your CV, uh, put them on LinkedIn, and you know, increase your chances of getting a job, a promotion, a salary raise. Everybody knows this, right? And within cybersecurity certifications, the CISSP, that is widely considered to be the gold standard for all cybersecurity certifications and, and for very good reasons, right? I don't know anybody in cybersecurity who doesn't want to have that CISSP if they haven't gotten it. It's an intermediate to advanced level cert and it has like stood the test of time by keeping itself relevant. You know, the ISC square, they keep updating it. I got certified in 2005, almost like two decades ago. And still it's quite impressive for me to see how the CISSP has retained its standing within the industry. I mean, you go to any like a uh, top 10 list of cybersecurity certifications, even in 2023, right? It is still co widely considered to be, you'll always find it within the top 10 easily, no matter which list you look at, uh, when it comes to cybersecurity certifications, the CISSP, believe me, it will be there. So that just goes to show just how much it has remained relevant and how much like uh, people are still in demand. Most of the jobs at a senior level, which you try, which you apply for, they will ask for this, right? They will say we want a CISSP certified person. So definitely it, it should be on your, what do you call, uh, target list. If you have not gotten it, I would always recommend people to try the CISSP because it gives you a very, very good foundational to intermediate knowledge about cybersecurity. Most CISOs I know, I mean, they usually like started out with the CISSP to go get that knowledge and then slowly they moved up the ladder. But the thing is, CISSP is not an easy exam by any means, right? It's a massive eight domain coverage. There's a ton of stuff to cover and all of its eight domains are like uh, not equal. So some are easy, some are very, very difficult. So this is where I wanted to talk about today. Uh, CSSP exam tips and tricks. I've, I've been CSSP certified for the past two decades. I've also taught the CSSP domains many, many times. In fact, I'm thinking of making a video on this channel also then. But I wanted to make a video on some very like a key exam tips and tricks. A few of them, most people already know, like the common ones, right? Like practice exams and have a study groups. I mean, that's honestly, that's nothing new. I want to give a few others, which I feel some people might not be aware of, and I hope they can help you out. So before we move ahead, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel so you get notified about the latest videos. And so just if you're not aware, very, very quick primer with the CSSP. It's the most globally recognized certification, right? In the cybersecurity market. And it's like uh, validates your deep technical and managerial knowledge whether you can effectively design and manage the overall security posture of an organization, right? And it's called, the syllabus is called the common body of knowledge, which keeps getting revised continuously, okay? And it has, like I said, it has eight domains, which are around security and risk management, asset security, all the way up to uh, security operations, software development security, right? And you need to have like a minimum of five years experience uh, in two or more of the eight domains. And you can get like a degree, there are ways to go at, and if you, even if you don't have the experience, you can pass the exam and become a CISSP associate. And then later on, once you have the experience, you can apply for uh, the certificate, right? So when I talked about tips of passing the exam, uh, yeah, like I said, it can become initially become very overwhelming when you are trying to prepare for the CISSP. So these are a few tips and tricks which I've like uh, checked out myself, I've given to others. Like I said, some of the common ones, some techniques everybody already knows, right? Practicing in study groups, purchasing sample exams. But what about other ones? So let's talk about the first. So first one is time blocking. Now this is quite like common, uh, but it is amazing how many people do not do it. Do not prep for the CSSP at whatever time you feel like it. Instead use uh, time blocking. Use an app like Google Calendar and block a specific time. You feel you're most active, block that time and do not allow anybody to disturb it, right? Close away all the extra tabs on your phone and lock away that phone, okay? Close that extra tabs on your browser. This allows you focus time. We can absorb the most amount of information. So it is, like I said, it's quite incredible how many people I know, they just like study whenever they feel like it, whenever they feel they have like active time. I would recommend just like you have like uh, meeting invites on your work calendar, right? And you know, you have to be there at that specific time. Block a time on your calendar. Use something like Google. Google Calendar is completely free. Use that, block it on your calendar and use that time, okay? Don't do don't do it whenever you want to feel like it. That, that'll be a like disaster, honestly, when it comes to preparing. So that was the time blocking rule. The other one is the 80-20 rule. Now the 80-20 rule, if you're not familiar with it, that's like a business rule. I'm not talking about that one. The 80-20 rule is 
like in business 80 percent of your like outcomes or profits depend on 20 percent of your inputs that's not what i'm talking about here what i'm talking about is here it means that you should spend 80 percent of your time on practice exams and just 20 percent reviewing the material so many people i know they do the opposite they spend 80 percent of their time just reviewing the manual just revising the concepts again and again and only 20 percent like two weeks before they start the practice exams no please you're not going to be writing an essay in the CSSC exam but instead you're going to be asked about specific concepts in a certain way so do not spend most of your time cramming the concepts and just the last few weeks in practice questions do the opposite do a quick review of the journal and then believe me start the practice questions as early as you can most of the concepts will become very firmly like stored in your mind not from the CISSP textbooks but from practicing the questions and getting them wrong again and again you know you'll get it wrong again and again you'll keep trying this is the best way you will understand how the questions are structured within the CISSP how they come and believe me when I said this will help you a lot and this will very firmly ingrain the concepts within your mind what does teach the CISSP concepts so this might seem strange you might be saying hey I'm not, I haven't passed the CISSP yet how can I teach it well you won't believe I mean a lot of times this may seem strange, but passive reading gets very boring after a while okay instead of just ingesting CSSP concepts go ahead and actually teach it to someone teaching rather than reading makes the concept permanently stored and there's nothing quite like teaching a concept and then making someone else understand it uh, it is very very difficult to forget something after you've taught it find out which subject which topics you're getting difficulty at right like encryption like i don't know application security and go ahead and teach that believe me when i say you will not forget it okay and it's not just about going ahead and teaching somebody like you don't have to go to a workshop you can even like make a youtube video uh like just one-on-one -on -one teaching to somebody make a udemy course whatever is easier for you don't worry you're not about thinking about making money right now right it is just about preparing but believe me when i say teaching is one of the best ways to permanently learn this four uh using chat gpt now this might seem like again chat gpt a lot of people use it the wrong way and a lot of people are now backlashing against the, uh, like the chat GPT, saying it is overrated, it has been our surpass. But ignore that chat GPT is still as awesome as ever. And it can be an extremely powerful tool for prepping up your exam. You can even use it as a study assistant, okay? Like, uh, just to give you an example, you can use it to create like a customized study plan based on how much time you have. You can you can say, I am preparing for the CISC certification, which is two months. And can you propose a training plan or study plan for me? I have around an hour each day to study and it can actually tell you okay this is based on how much time you have you can actually use it like this okay so this is very very powerful you can actually use it to create a proper study plan and you can go as detailed as you want right you can like a, just an example of what I showed you you can even say can you break it day wise so it will actually break it down for you day by day which you can put in your time blocking the one I showed so this is very very powerful chat GPT and you can also use it for explaining CSSP concepts that you're having difficulty with. You can ask it to break it down into simple language. Uh, sometimes I've seen CSSP textbooks, they make things way too complex. And ChatGPT can be a great way to simplify these things. So engage in dialogue with it. Use it to clarify and explain concepts you're having problems with. Okay. Don't use ChatGPT for sample questions as they might not be correct. Please use the official CSSP exam questions. But ChatGPT is a great way to engage back and forth try to explain the concepts tell it to explain it to you in a very very simple way create a study plan okay and last but not least is forming the answer first now this might seem strange what am i talking about now if you remember the cssp is a multiple choice question right and which you asked to pick the correct answer some questions can be very tricky because if you've ever like done the cssp or some other exam they ask you what is the most uh, like correct answer what is the least correct answer so in that particular choice uh everything is correct and everything is like incorrect but you have to find which is the most incorrect okay so this is where formulating the answer might help you because these questions can be quite difficult as all the answers are correct right one technique which is this technique when i talk about is read the question and don't look at the answers instead formulate the answer first in your mind okay before looking at the answers so here when you look at it which of the following is the most likely attack that a hacker would perform to intercept and alter data in transit between a client and a server now your most likely reaction would be to go to the answers and try to find which is the most correct one right don't do that in fact just don't even look at the answers and what you do is 
uh, formulate the answer first. You based on your own knowledge, what do you think is the most like a uh, common way here? This way, and then you go and look at the answers. Okay, and probably you'll find the one you guessed correctly within there. This way, you will not get confused as you have already thought about what the correct answer is, and you're just looking for it in the list. And this can be applied to pretty much all the questions in the CSSP. But I found it to be most effective for those type of questions, like the least and the most. Because a lot of people I've seen, they get like very worried about that, okay? So I hope this was useful to you guys. A few key things to keep in mind when you're preparing for the CSSP. So having the CSSP will not make you stand out because I want to be very clear. I got, like like I said, I got CSSP certified in 2005. I was the fifth CSSP certified in my country. It was a very big deal at that time. You were like a mini celebrity and people with consulting companies are falling over each other to hire you. That's no longer the case. Times are tough, uh, layoffs are happening, which is there is there which means there's a huge competition amongst job seekers with many CISSPs looking for job. But consider the other option. Not having the CISSP will make you stand out even more. Okay? That means you will not even pass the screening phase when you apply for a job. HR will probably screen your CV and remove it before it even reaches the CISO's desk. So remember that CISSP is important. Don't forget it. But so start preparing for the CISSP and getting. And also remember, get the hands-on experience. Like whether you agree or not, like CSSP is very important, but you need to have hands-on experience also. Uh, don't just become a certification machine, which I'm going to make a video on. People who do certs after cert after cert, that's not a good way to go about it, okay? So I hope this was useful to you guys. Good luck to you on your CSSP certification. I hope you ace it. If these tips help you out, please do let me know within the comments section. That will make me very, very happy. I hope this was useful to you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.